Hey everybody, we're starting a little bit early today because I have a hard out at 4 o'clock and I wanted to do a full two-hour show, so uh, thanks for being forgiving. Um, and uh, hit that like, let everybody know we're here right now. And if you want to, if anybody is uh, not aware, uh, let them know. All right. Yes, we're up early. It's all right. It's, uh, it's not you, it's me. Come on now. All right. Let them know. Okay. Let's go, everybody. All right, let me, uh, let's just go ahead and get started right out of the gate. <clears throat> let me see, hitting the chat. Let's just go straight to the chat. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the show. Mike is on. All's well. How are you? Good to see you. What's happening? Okay. Yes, I'm starting early today um, just because I wanted to get a full show in. If people come later and they're like, oh, shit, I missed it, they can, they can rewatch the other hour and it'll be totally good. And it's all right. It's okay. It's gonna, we're going to be fine. We'll make it through it. Yes, because uh, I have a hard out at 4 o'clock today because i got to go do some uh, family stuff. And, uh, you know, just some hanging with the fam that's only possible this evening. So I hope you can forgive me for that tomorrow. Uh, regular show, and I believe, and Andrea isn't with us yet because I think she's going to be along in a little bit. I think we might even have Frangela on tomorrow. Uh, is that is she? There you go. Oh, jo yeah. Sorry, Johnny. I'm overlapping with Johnny Million, too. So, again, uh, I, I, no hard feelings if you pick whichever you need the most right now. Do you need music in your life? And I think that you do. It's Johnny Million. And if uh, you need to hear this craziness, here I am. So, drinking a tea to your good health. No. Mm hmm Hi, everybody. So, um, <clears throat> hit the like and all that kind of stuff. We're live on Instagram right now. So, if you're on the Insta and you're gramming, then do it. Um, and uh, Andrea is... Is Frangela for sure tomorrow, or are we, are we possibly getting them for Friday? I don't know. I hope so. We're getting them soon. Because I understand that they're on a, uh, they're on some sort of a tour, like a something involving sexy people who are liberal and also are comedy and perhaps trying to save the world, the sexy liberal <clears throat> save the world tour, that kind of thing. And, uh, I, you know... Not, the, it, the hardest part about interviewing Frangela or, or having them as a guest on the show will be uh, not excluding Angela because Francis and I were at Second City together when we were teenagers. Whole backstory, not going to tell you the whole story again if you've never heard of it. 
uh, heard it when they're on, we'll discuss it. I'll try not to bring it up. But literally, I did improv as a teenager with Francis. And then years later, what do you know? Stephanie Miller reunites us after all this time. It's just lovely. And I can't speak highly enough about her. Angela's obviously lovely. But I, you know, as a, as a human being, Francis has been the goods my the majority of my life. Just saying. And, and yeah, so I have a fam thing at four o'clock. I got to bug out. So um, f- forgive. And, uh, you know, that's how we live around here. Anyways, yeah, I saw that Joe Flaherty passed away today. That's very sad. Um, Joe was an integral part of SCTV. And just more than almost anybody on SCTV, there was a, a joy at doing what he was doing that almost sneaked through even his characters. Like he was... He almost had that Carol Burnett laughing at everything that was going on around him kind of an energy, if you know what I mean. He didn't break necessarily, but there was always this kind of like, we're fucking around, kind of lightness to it, which was really uh, like crucial to all of his characters. He's also the character in Spies Like Us who goes, ah, she, or uh, sorry, Caddyshack. Uh, no, not Caddyshack. What am I talking about? Um, Stripes. There, I'll find, I found it eventually. Stripes who goes, uh, Chicago, bang, bang. And, um... Uh, and when I moved to Chicago, <laughs> that was like uh, one of our um, sort of goofy pickup lines as teenage boys. We'd go, hey, Chicago, bang, bang, um, as a joke. Um, this is before I met Johnny, by the way. This is the other group of friends. Um, anyways, he was a sweetheart. And everybody, like you can tell by how people are talking about him, what a lovely human being he was. Uh, did Israel bomb Iran? No, they did not. They did not bomb Iran. They hit the uh, Iranian, uh, like a consulate building in, in um, like, basically killing Hezbollah guys um, uh, it, in another country. It's, uh, it wasn't Syria, beg your pardon. Um, anyways, th- no, they did not bomb Iran. Um, and whatever. It's uh, Believe me, it's the same shit we'll hear over and over again. Uh, none of this stuff is going to escalate to the point everybody's worried about. And right now, the biggest thing, um, I think, is just the uh, the clearing of Rafa if they're going to go in or not, and that kind of stuff, while the food and other, other stuff is getting in. And, of course, the aid workers that were killed in the strike, um, you know, again, I would like to know how their movements were limited by the people who were in there, specifically Islamic State, who is seemingly getting a weird pass. Love stuff. Okay. Uh, you early love eat. How sparks you early love eat. Love eat. Okay. Love eat. Oh, love eat. I see. I got you. Love it, but eat. I understand. Ah, <laughs> cool. Mm-hmm. Um, there you go. Uh, it's snowing in Rockford. Right on. Um, man, better than better. Sorry. Um, now let's, uh, most of what I have for you today is that it, um, well, shit. Remember when Trump um, said this whole thing about um, uh, I it, like it's going to be a bloodbath, and everybody was like he was talking about the auto industry. Remember, like there was a huge fucking cleanup of this. Everybody, Don, I'm on early because I have a family thing uh, tonight. I'm going out with the fam tonight, and um, I have to be done by four to make it to where we're. So yeah, um, remember that everybody, right? Just so we're on the same page. Yes, I, I he clearly was full of shit. He was talking about immigrants are going to be just murdering people slash terrorism. That's what he meant. But when he said it, everybody was like, whoa, 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 hold up. This is the fucking fake news and they're bullshit and they're just trying. He was talking about cars. He was talking about the auto industry. We saw this uh, like several different clips. I did like two of them on the show, right? This was the thing. Okay. Uh, well, all those people uh, are are fucked today because Trump went to Michigan and he now has a, a, a like a sign that he's putting on his on the front of his fucking podium. Well, here I'll show it to you. Um, Stop Biden's border bloodbath, and he is not talking about cars, people. He is talking about like this whole thing. This is they found a nerve and they're stepping on it, which is. Um, Dead Americans who were killed by immigrants, they're just going to play that to the hilt. That's the idea, right? Anecdotal, uh, you know, terrible situations, tragedies all around. Shit, by the way, that when it happened, like he didn't make a huge deal out of any of them when it happened during his presidency. And he also points to the, the lowest point 
of you know of crossings during his uh, presidency or whatever um, was 2020. The, he's like the last few months I was in office. Okay, y- yeah, because of fucking COVID, dum dum. Anyways, yeah. So it, all the people who were like throwing themselves in front of that fucking bus uh, are, uh, I mean. I don't know if they're embarrassed now or they're just going to pretend it didn't happen or they're going to go, fuck me. But uh, apparently he reacted to them lecturing him about it or hearing it from everybody n- the opposite way they were hoping. They were hoping he was, yeah, I was just talking about it's going to be an economic bloodbath. Even Don Jr. was like, yeah, it's a common term, an economic bloodbath. And he was like, no, 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 I was talking about like them just murdering everybody. They're just going to kill all the white women. That's what he means. And so he got fucking pissed and they're just all in on this fucking stuff now. Look at this. Stop Biden's border bloodbath. He's talking, This is, and these are all police officers. These aren't auto workers. See what I'm saying? Okay. So we'll get to that in a second. But first, but first, uh, hit that like chat and let everybody know we're here. Because again, I'm early. Sorry. Also, patreon.com slash housesparks. Uh, and, uh, and and you can super chat and uh, stars and support and bits. And subscribe if you're on Twitch. We're, our subscribers are down because I always forget to ask. Because you have to redo it. You have to re-up your subscriptions. You can also gift sc- subscriptions on there to other people if you already have one. And you can gift memberships on YouTube. That's the way to do it. Okay, now. On with the shoe. Um, hello, bonjour, Templeton. Zerat. Yes, we're at 67.3 thousand subscribers. We're getting to, we'll get there to 68. We're going to do it. It's going to happen. All right, here we go. Now, uh, before we jump into Trump's little thing, which I'm not going to be able to have time for all of it today, but um, this is, I, I want to show you guys what I think is a great example of when Republicans have no idea what their position is. There's several examples of this we've seen multiple times, but they don't know whether they are should be for something or against it until either Trump tells them, and then he, like a bunch of things, like the bloodbath thing, like a lot of times he changes his fucking position. Like they were all in on this 15-week thing, maybe, and then... Florida goes into six, and so now he's kind of, he'll be, he's got to make, he's like, we're going to be making a statement soon. Like, he keeps saying that. And, uh, no, no, they're not. He's not going to be making a statement soon. Because the minute he says, I'm for 15 weeks, all the total anti-abortionists, uh, it, will be, they'll be divided into two groups. One group will think, he's lying. He's going to totally outlaw it. He's going to totally outlaw it. He's just saying he's for 15 weeks. That's half of them. He's lying for Jesus. That's that part. And then the other half, uh, those people will be like, what the what what the fuck? Do you even pro-life, bro? And they'll be against him and then they'll just not vote or check out or something or, you know, find some way to vote for RFK because his his uh, his VP is against IVF. Whew. Anyways, yeah. Now, like that's some craziness for some other time. Tomorrow, the. Robert F. Kennedy Jr., I think he gave a speech in front of the, um, the I want to say it was the Lincoln Memorial, wherever. He was in D.C. All, all I could see was the steps from the clip I saw. And he gave a whole speech there or whatever. And and the little slice I saw was fucking bananas. So I would like to cover the whole thing in context, as we like to do around here, because you're welcome. Also, there was an article on uh, Raw Story this morning that was saying, um, Democrats want you to watch an entire Trump rally. The... the the conventional wisdom is they want you to steer clear of that because it's the other person's message. And finally, they are coming around to who said it first, folks. <laughs> who, 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 who was saying, if you watch the whole fucking thing, that's the thing that will stop you supporting him. Watch the whole fucking thing. And I'll, I, I've, I've done it with you a bunch of times and you guys know exactly what the fuck I'm talking about. If you do it a little bits, you're like, oh, you know, that was crazy, but probably that means the rest of it was normal and they're picking on him. That's what the maggots want to think. No, the whole fucking thing is batshit and it's a mess. And you need to watch a whole one to get that in context because it's mind-blowing for people who haven't done it. Us, eh, not so much. Now, uh, what was the other one? Oh, Monday, Maddow, love her, mm, uh, yesterday, she did a, uh, a segment on fake social media accounts that are at, from both Russia and China that are f- playing both sides of the issue and fucking with 
voters and trying to create division, all that shit. It was a great report. And I've been saying it for two fucking years. I mean, as long as, well, uh, three now. My, I, as long as my fucking show has been on, three plus, I have been telling you guys about this stuff. And it is so nice that they're finally waking up. Uh, it's, it, it's, I don't know, when she covers it, you know, it's reached, you know, the, the high water mark. But I've been telling you, that's the thing. So don't buy into it. If an account starts a pissing match with you and they're like, but I am Joe from Illinois. Uh, uh, also live Indiana, also Joliet, also vacationing in the Bible belting. I'm Job from this place. And America MAGA, this is my thing. Then you go like, all right, fuck what? This is, uh, no. So I would suggest that if you're ever being trolled, this is my uh, uh, new thing. If you're ever being trolled um, by somebody you're like, you know, this is one of those like name, 16 numbers, uh, MAGA forever fucking in their profile or whatever. Here's what I suggest. Um, type in Putin sucks or Xi Jinping is an idiot in one of the responses. Don't even do like a full like, if you're like, hey, maybe I'm in a pissing match with this moron and they're not even real. One of the ways, yeah, one of the ways you can find out is if you type that in, they will either have to shut down and avoid you because they can't agree while staying in character. They'll have to either break character and go, well, Biden is worse or something. You go, oh, so you, where exactly are you in China? Where exactly are you in, right, in Russia? That, that's the, that's how you get them, especially in China, because they're much more sensitive about it. So the, the other thing too, is if it's a, if you think they're, you know, you look at their account, you see they've accidentally typed in Chinese, um, then uh, put up a Winnie the Pooh picture, and then uh, if you if if you think they're Russian or something, just you know find one of those like weird like uh, th- there's a composite picture of uh, of Putin sniffing children. That's where they got the Biden sniffing thing. It's like when you lean forward and you say something, and then somebody snaps a picture while your eyes are closed because you blink. They find that they, you know, they're like this and they take the frame where you're blinking and then they go the sniffing children. Okay. The reason they've been doing that to Biden for a while is because there's all this stuff on Russian media about, uh, like on Russian social media, kind of under the radar, like telegram and stuff about, uh, Putin being a pedophile and having children around and being inappropriate with them and all that stuff. And there's a lot of pictures of him holding their shoulders and leaning too close. So they, like Trump tries to divert attention away from his shit um, yeah, um, you know, they do the same thing. So there you go. Anyways, yes, I'm on early and high. Uh, she got in trouble, so she Trump. I agree. Okay, now, this, the reason I want to talk about this is that they have no fucking idea which side to be on, on a bunch of issues. And this is a great example of this. Ladies and gentlemen, oh God. Um, this is, I'm sorry, I'm underdressed. How about this? <laughs> Severe enough for you? Hmm? Mm. Who's been a naughty Blaze viewer? Mm. Um, this is uh, what's the, the woman's name? I don't know. They, they don't even care. Oh, Sarah Gonzalez. Okay, so government overreach? Uh, question mark? Stop TikTok? Is it a Trojan horse? That is the TikTok ban. Good idea or a Trojan horse for censorship? So they they I guess they put a picture of her and it and that phrase into a what their shitty AI generator and this is the thumbnail it came up. Government over rich? Govt over rich? I don't know. Um so yeah again they on the one hand TikTok is owned by by uh, by uh ByteDance which is a Chinese company. It is uh, there's not a single major company that has not been taken over by the Chinese government or the military. Um, in the last six years, they have moved in and swiped everybody. If you don't believe me, ask Jack Ma if you can find him. And so Alibaba, all these things are now just basically government websites. They might have even started out individually, but ever, but the they had that torn away from them. Okay. TikTok's the same way. In, in China, it's called Douyin. And in, on, on Douyin, you can't see any of the shit they show on TikTok. They have dozens of fake accounts, and they can also... Uh, track your phone, turn on your camera without your permission. There's all kinds of shit that they do, and it's bad. So, uh, here's here's how I feel about it. Uh, TikTok is malware. Get it off your phone, and yes, it should be banned because it is a government-owned fake social media site. That's what it is. 
See how easy that was? Huh? See that? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, now, uh, also, well, we'll see. I want to see what their reaction to this. But they have no fucking idea how to feel about it. That's why it's all question marks. Like, even her picture's like, I'm dubious. Maybe the government, maybe our government's the problem. Maybe the Chinese government isn't the problem. Maybe our government's the problem. Um, says lunatic. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis signed legislation prohibiting children younger than 14 from having any social media accounts, saying, which, of course, I completely agree with him, that social media is harmful to their development and to their mental health. Now, I <laughs> But I don't believe they should be denied it, even though they're minors. See, again, watch. She's on both sides of this issue. They all are. They have fucking no idea. Obviously, um, there are others who say this is... This is totally with with this is not within the scope of the government's job. This is a parental issue. And I right. So why do we uh, limit alcohol? Shouldn't we just let the parents decide? And if the parents aren't looking, um, then, uh, you know, they, they, you know, what's wrong with a, the occasional 12 year old drunk driving accident? You know, let your kids decide if they want to smoke. Right. Maybe you want your kid to maybe you're sick of your your kid getting picked on on the playground, you know, at kindergarten, and you think he'll look a little tougher if he's got a cigarette dangling out of his mouth. <laughs> Again, she has no fucking idea whether to be for it or against it. That's what this is more about. I just, I have really mixed feelings about this. I don't have any actual, uh, like my decision muscle has been destroyed by years of sucking up to Donald Trump and just doing what I'm told without actually making my own decisions about it. It's weird. I've been told to do my own research, but then what that means is I read the research of people who are telling me that and not other research, and then I realize I haven't done my own research. I'm just reading their research, and I don't even know. I have a cough that won't go away. Because I, I do think that children should be away from social media. My just away. Children do not have. Well, my younger child is three, so he definitely doesn't have a phone um, or an iPad or anything like that. But my older child is eleven, mm -hmm. almost twelve, and there, I, like, I, I don't even have a timeline as to when he's going to get a phone or an iPad or anything like that because it's just entirely inappropriate for children to be on social media. So I know that as a parent, and so this. <laughs> right, but. Do, how about this? What about the, it, it's almost like vaccines, lady. I know how to keep my kids healthy. I know that. I'm not, I'm not worried about measles. Uh, we went to a measles camp a little while ago, and uh, he didn't catch it there because we were we showed up early and left early. Um, but so I'm not really worried. Like, let other people get vaccinated, and then I'll just piggyback on their vaccination status. Huh? I don't have to vaccinate my kid. All the rest of the kids are vaccinated, so they can't, you know, it's be fine until hoop and cough. This feels like it's like, this feels like a... This feels like um, in my bullshit paranoia about all things government that is, you know, I'm not, believe me, I don't trust the government to do anything, especially all the things I take for granted every fucking day until one of them doesn't work because humans will human, and then it's all the government's fault, in which case I am giving them the entire responsibility, saying it is entire, entirely their fault. Win? But then it's like, I don't know, it just... I just sit you on a banana, banana. Here's the thing. Um, they're children. Yeah, they're children. If you, if, uh, what are you bitching about drag queen story hour or any of that shit for, if you're just like, this shouldn't, this should parents can make their own fucking decisions. I give a shit. So all of a sudden she's libertarian laissez faire about this shit. It, f oh, it feels like an overreach of government. And I, this is, I love Ron DeSantis. I feel like anytime I'm talking, I'm, anytime I'm criticizing Ron DeSantis or Donald Trump, I have to be like, I love the guy, <laughs> but I thought it would be an interesting conversation. Yeah, it's an interesting conversation. Can one of you please tell me what I'm supposed to believe? Because I know what I believe. I just don't want it acted upon until, uh, except when I'm talking about other people's shit. Of is this, is this an overreach of the state telling? They're minors. 
if this is an overreach, every law governing minors is an overreach, dummy. Gee, no wonder you're voting for the guy that was friends with Jeffrey Epstein for two and a half decades. ...you what you can or cannot do with your children. Well, it's not what, it's not what you can or can't do with your children. It's what your children can do in or out of your sight. Like, my kids don't smoke in my house, but if they walk down to the corner store, fuck you. Like, what is that about? I uh, I actually got into this online, which I probably shouldn't, and, and I'm conflicted as well, but... <laughs> because you put all your fucking eggs in the America sucks, government can't do anything right, at, you know, proto-libertarian Ayn Rand nutbag basket... And you can't get them out now that they're cracked and runny. By the way, hold on. Matthew Marsden is the greatest parenting expert because he has one billion children. <laughs> <laughs> one billion and five. <laughs> no, I mean, I think that unfortunately you're in a situation where parents are not uh, monitoring their kids for the most part. And I think that something like... Mm -hmm. Not him. Not her, obviously. You guys, you, 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 you fucking shitty parents out there. You don't take care of your kids and your shit kids are on social media. And they're going to hang out with my kids and show their phone to my kid. And then I've got to do some parenting. Like, um... TikTok is is very very damaging. I mean, it, it's it's very different in China to the one that we've got here. Right. I think for young women, uh, it's destroying their sense of. That's Instagram. You're thinking of of self. I think. No, <laughs> look, Instagram might be destroying people's sense of self because of you know whatever you know uh, impossible body standards or whatever. That that was a conversation we were having like a fucking decade ago. TikTok has groups on cutting. TikTok has groups on cutting. This isn't about your fucking self-esteem. It's about how to hide your cuts from your parents. No. For men, they, they don't know. It's gateway to porn, all this. <laughs> okay, first of all, if you have the internet, you don't need a gateway to porn. For fuck's sake. Do you have two thumbs? I, well, I guess you'll need more than that to masturbate technically. Well, maybe not. I don't know. There's a tech, there's something for everybody. But, um, yeah. <laughs> to porn? Yes. Uh, porn. Is it, you know, you know, a gateway to porn? A get, gateway, gateway to porn. Huh? Yeah. Like the Sears catalog or, you're, you're kidding me, right? So, I would come down on the side of, yes, I think it's a good thing to ban it for kids, yeah. although I don't like that. I wish that we lived in a different world. I, I... <laughs> what? In a different world? You know what? I, 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 gosh, I, you know me too, buddy. I wish we lived in a world where alcohol and cigarettes and heroin and fentanyl and, and uh, pornography, you know, like child pornography specifically, uh, didn't exist. Yeah, if it just wasn't there. We we didn't have a need for these kind of things. If they just nobody had bothered to invent it would be so much easier to parent if there if the world was nerf. I also disagree with the libertarian and I'm for the most part I'm on the side of libertarians. <laughs> yeah, except for that whole can't actually do anything not an actual political philosophy. Libertarianism is like socialism. Neither are political philosophies. But somehow, people think they have something to do with politics. Socialism is an economic strategy that you could arguably lay over, in theory, any, from dictatorial to democratic, all the way across it, that socialism can exist as a system. It is not a counter to capitalism either. It is its own thing. The same thing is true of libertarianism. Like, it, it, except it is not a political thought form. It is basically like the the concept of viewing yourself as a Wild West gunslinger on your own, you against the world, until you need anything, and then some other fucker is responsible for not giving it to you. Uh, but I don't think that... There's actually a lot of overlap. Everything is okay. I don't think that everything should be allowed because... 
What a weird thought. Can you imagine? Imagine if I was on a show and I had to say, I don't think everything should be allowed to clear the way for what I was trying to say. You imagine, you imagine talking to other people where you have to say, I don't believe everything should be allowed. It should, shouldn't be a free for all, you know, you shouldn't be able to just run up and chuck a kid in a wood chipper. You know, you shouldn't be able to just, t- you know, take a hammer to the head of every old lady you see. You shouldn't, you shouldn't be able to, you know, I'm not for driving backwards down the freeway at 100 miles an hour with while blazing the soundtrack to Mad Max with saw blades coming out of the side. You know, I'm not for everything. Jesus Christ. I mean, clearly we have restrictions on alcohol and, and other. Look at Matthew finding his way there. And I, look, I've had a, by the way, Matthew's an actor. He was in the uh, the Rambo movie um, that takes place in Myanmar and Burma. He was fine in it. Um, he's gone straight up MAGA and he's very panicked about the whole thing. The, apparently his big thing is like trans shit scares the living fuck out of him. He also thinks he can't get hired in Hollywood because it's too woke or some shit like that. And he's, he's taken this whole like... I'm conservative in Hollywood, therefore I can't get work or whatever. It's not even American. So, like, honestly, don't you have an industry over there? Don't get me started on British actors taking American roles. I might even start getting mad about the idea that the Daily Host show for a long time stepped in front of a lot of very fine American black comics who would be great uh, discussing politics on an evening, but somehow... It goes to someone from not the country. Anyways, um, whatever. Um, but in this particular case, like, sorry, Hollywood ain't your shit, man. I mean, bit, get on it, like, fuck off about, you know, I don't know if it's Sydney, or Perth, where do they do it? Are the things that we know are damaging to kids who their brains aren't formed properly. Mm-hmm. Right, which would include what they read and see, right? That's why they have ideation problems that's why they have uh, that's why there's group things why discussing um offing yourself with uh, kids is very difficult because if one kid does it there'll be a cascading effect because of uh the the social pressure of the experience and that's uh, the same thing happens with what's called trans trenderism which is not genuine transgender feelings it's something else entirely and again not the responsibility of actual trans people um that's because uh, they're kids so i and by the way, I uh, also, uh, Gulf of Marie is saying parents teach your children. I completely agree. But let me just say, there, um, this idea of like parental involvement in schools or that that's supposed to pick it up or whatever. Sorry. If you're in schools or you're in daycare or whatever, you're the responsibility of those people while they're there and your parents aren't physically present. And let's say you're a kid who, uh, sadly enough, is orphaned and don't have any parents, and maybe you're going through foster homes, and maybe you'll eventually get adopted. Oh, thank you so much for the gifted subs, um, uh, Ruben. Thank you so much. Um, that it's it, it's kind of crucial that we don't just kind of go, uh, parent, parental involvement will solve this, because I got news for you. Some parents, the fact that they fuck off is more beneficial to the child than them being around in this there's this averaging that happens whenever we talk about this. It's, by the way, and it's also nothing you can legislate. You cannot legislate forcing parents to become involved in their kids' lives. You can't do it. There is no law anybody's ever going to try to fucking pass that says if parents don't show up at school board meetings or or show up for you know parent-teacher conferences, they got to spend a night in jail. Nobody's ever going to fucking sign that, so I don't want to hear a politician ever fucking talking about it. It's not your job. You can't do anything about it. Okay. It's so weird. I really do think that it's a good thing. Uh, my the school that my kids go to, there's no social media. It's a social media blanket, and I know that you love that, right? Yeah. I mean, I yeah. think that that because what you Which, do- hold on. Does it- a private school explain to them what you mean by that you guys all the families who enter the school have to sign something saying we will not allow our children to have social yeah, media. our kids will not have so okay so mm-hmm. at a private school you know 
where we got to, no one's allowed to do it. You know. Social media. So what you don't have is one kid that has it, someone right. that doesn't, yes. and then they're like, oh. and listen, we, God, we that drives me nuts. Yeah, yeah. So you're our first school uniforms is what you're saying. So uniform behavior. So you want a school that cranks out people like a oh, good Lord. Yeah. He, like, it's like, I don't want the government to do this, but we'll all engage as a group collectively that if we want our kids to go to this school, or if we want to, our kids to be allowed in this school, that the parents of that school and everybody else made a decision at some point to fucking fill out forms and voted on this. And apparently it passed and now it's policy. Sounds like government to me. He's English? Oh, okay. And it's it's hard for the kids. Ruin right? it for all, yeah. all of us. So it, none of my kids have social media. Not a no. single one i have a 17 year old 15 14 11 and 8 none of them have it they will not have it as long as I'm in my house mm -hmm. we don't do that yeah. and it's because i know what is out there right and they're minors at the end of it they don't have the same rights that i have aha and that's just kind of the end of it what concerns me about the bill is what is social media right. is this <laughs> yeah does that include truth social for example because i need my kids to, what am I supposed to do? Wake up every day and recite everything Trump said? There's like 70 posts. They have to read it on their own. Online gaming. Does this extend to Fortnite? Does no, it does not extend to Fortnite. Does this extend to, to playing Modern Warfare with your friends? No, it does not extend to Modern Warfare with your friends. It's not social media. That's gaming. The media is the gaming. It's not the same just getting... Fuck you. And if the bill is written that poorly, your problem is not with the policy or the idea. The, your problem is with fucking DeSantis being a slapdash asshole. How far does this bill get to reach? So overreach is something I all... I don't know. Fucking read it? This is the first I'm hearing of it. And so I'm not going to do your research for you because I don't give a shit in that regard. What? Always consider when the government institutes a new policy that controls more. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. if the idea is to protect children, I'm always for it. Me too. Good start place. Me, Good right. place. Yeah, me too. Me too. So more control to uh, protect children. Control to protect children. Good thing. Okay. Except. Too. That's why it's like I feel like this. It's a win for kids. <laughs> but it's a loss for America. I, you, she's sounding, I gotta say, you, you're sounding very Epstein right now. Like, obviously, you know, they they put up that, they put guards around the campus. It's a win for kids, but it's really fucking with my business model. Period. Yes. Right? Like, this is a win for children. Okay. And so why are you confused? Um, You just worry about how it will... What are they going to do? Extend it to 22-year-olds and then 30-year-olds and then you? Be used against us later on in other... In other things when we become adults, when it's our ass. Like, what are you talking about? We've had, like, limits on purchasing alcohol and cigarettes for all this time. What the fuck are you talking about? Cause I got to say, because this reeks of that whole, like, you know... If we can try kids as adults and they can make adult decisions, certainly you could sleep with one. That sounds like the kind of decisions she's talking about. Other areas. Well, that's maybe. where we are, right? I mean, we every right. every single thing that goes through you, like, how are they gonna? What, number one, what do they really mean by it? Like, are they? Yeah, that's what it's like. What do they really? Because they don't really want to protect kids. Obviously, what is what does Ron DeSantis really want? He just wants to. He's just going after Elon Musk. They just want. He doesn't want kids to have accounts um, what what do they really mean i think they really mean that like social media is unhealthy there's been plenty of studies on it they're passing a law that it's not healthy for minors they passed it in the state and they can't do anything about kids from other states who come in but kids there can whatever they really go like i would look at that initially and go not with ron DeSantis, but with some of the other stuff they've put through like about TikTok. are they really doing this to TikTok? or are they trying to shut down elon musk oh, right. is that yeah, that's that's what it, it, yeah, uh, that's uh, that's why I think every time you assholes attack uh, Mark Zuckerberg, I think are they, is, are they really going after Mark Zuckerberg and Facebook or are they really just still chapped ass about MySpace? Really what they're trying to do because the, the Democrats have recently have done nothing. They clearly do not care about kids. They clearly don't care about things like the border and and anything that is I, I, 
real, real quick. <clears throat> uh, I, I recognize that Epstein was arrested on federal charges finally uh, during the Trump administration. Died before he could testify. That's that's a bit weird. Um, uh, but uh, apparently, did, you know, nobody nobody even gave the whole Diddy thing a second glance during that whole time or whatever. And again, I okay. I wish I could find this shit. It's so weird. I don't even know that I'll be able to. Um, by the way, uh, I chat room. Um, real quick, hold on. Uh, let's see. Uh, human on uh, children being released. White House. Something like that. There'll be a uh, QAnon. Yeah, you're going to like, um, let's see, news. Um, QAnon for wine mom, somebody who's running around, who's running around, who's running around, who's running around, Ah, that's not going to be able to find it. Okay, wait. Uh, let's see. I guess it's going to be released. White House. Yeah, it's gonna be a bunch of Easter stories. I'll have to hunt it down. When and you guys will remember this. We we covered this um, at the time, but there was this big thing about how um, Trump apparently on his last day in office released like snuck out all these kids. The the QAnons had these pictures up of a they had gallows on the fucking lawn of the White House. That uh, apparently Hillary was being hung for the first time, but not the last, because they hung her, they cloned her, and then hung the clone, which I, I think, quite frankly, is killing a baby after it's born, even if it looks like an old lady at that point. Uh, so <laughs> so fucking weird. But there was this shot w that they alleged was children being snuck out of the White House. They, like on the last day of the Trump presidency, they were being they were being freed from the adrenochrome factory underneath the White House. And my question was simply why at the end of his presidency what wouldn't that be the first thing he did what the fuck were they doing for the four years down there i've never seen children released before true story by the way true story they floated this all over the fucking place who in the chat room has been around long enough to remember us covering some of this back in the day um because but listen to me the show's been on so long back in the day but it was literally yeah Stargow, you remember that? There was this fucking picture of like kid. It was it basically they. It was photoshopped, I think, of of like a, a a tour group of kids, and they were holding hands, like doing a, a kid train, and they were like walking out of there. They walking out of the front door of it, and they uh, like the QAnons were saying, "Oh my God, Trump is freeing these children on his last day in office because he can." I'm like, "Why the where what how what the fuck were they doing? Some of them look older than four years old. What the fuck?" How long were they down there? What are you talking about? Some of them, I mean, you could technically, shit, these kids look younger. What if one of them is four? That means they're a little under. They, they Did they enter after he became president? What the shit? Right? Super fucking weird. Um, <laughs> so this idea that somehow, like, Trump was here to fight against the, the pedos and all that kind of stuff, and then he just misses Diddy entirely, I guess. Diddy's getting busted now. All these guys are getting busted now, right? And never mind the fact that, um, not that he would know this, but in Florida, um, that's where the last two FBI agents who were killed in the line of duty that I'm aware of, I don't know if there's been one since, the two were killed serving a warrant on a uh, a guy who was um, distributing child pornography. He was he was busted, or they were coming to get him. They were serving when they had a whole group of cops with them and the two FBI officers um, or the ones that, you know, went to the door, he killed, um, both of them, a woman and a man shot them through the door. This, this during the Biden minutes or during, let's say, yeah, I think I'll, I'll look up the date, but the point is, is like, this is always going on. It's so fucking weird. Is human based like they say they do but they don't so it's a sad place that we're at where we look and we say well what where are they going with this what is asshole you're just saying this this round table isn't like i gotta tell you like democrats in general i don't have a problem with there being a like a law on uh on minors being on social media right either it, i mean it could be 
<clears throat> you could have uh, rating settings on them or insist on them for the social media companies that there's a PG-13 or a, or, a, or a kid's version, a G version of doing it. And with parental guidance, you could... You know, uh, you could have limited views on that kind of stuff. And there's all sorts of limitations that have been put on either by the companies themselves, like YouTube has this is your content for kids checkbox and all that kind of shit that they aim at. You know, they try to make people police themselves. There's nothing wrong about a, 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 the government. I mean, we, we rate movies. Why would this be any fucking different? I don't have a problem with that. And I don't think most Democrats would. I, quite frankly, I think a lot of Democrats would be more for it. Right? Because we're not paranoid about government regulations the way these motherfuckers are. You know who's going to run interference against it, though? Right? You know, you know who's going to be running interference? These fuckers. Try to pass a nationwide law. I mean, that's who do you think's been pushing back on the TikTok ban nationally? It's, it's right-wingers. There's been a couple of, like, squad members who don't like it either. Right? And, and you could argue that that's, you know, that's Russia and China feeding the fringes and trying to build them up. And, and so it's a good outlet for them because it's artificially been created to be a good outlet. Like, look at all of our reach, even though it's a fucking intellectual cul-de-sac and there's, you know, it's a, it's a bunch of choir preaching or fake views. That's another thing, another conversation. For them. But the vast majority of people are like, no, nah, I think of a, I think you can have like mo most social media, you can't be on it until you're 16 years old and then 16 above, you can be you know, parental guide with parental guidance, 16 to 18. And then after that, right? At 18, you can be in the military. You can fucking be on, you know, Twitter. Is the real, uh, uh, with Ron DeSantis, it's slightly different because he's great. I believe him. He's, yeah. he's yeah. totally great. Yes. He's this consistent. Is, yes, consistent. he is consistent. So I get it and, and, and I get that as well. It's difficult, but at the end of the day. Jesus, like, like can you imagine us having to have this conversation? Hey. It's destroying kids. It is. I mean, TikTok is the destroying. only. <laughs> That's it. He's coming like, it, you know, and I back and forth and thankfully it's, it's Ron DeSantis. I mean, you can all agree this stuff is destroying kids. And if a Democrat tried to stop it from destroying kids, I would question, are they really trying to stop the destruction of kids, which is what I believe um, would happen if they did this? Or is it something else like I don't know. Read the fucking bill, dum dum. Propaganda site that is not controlled by U.S. intelligence. It's the only reason that the government's talking about it. Wait, what? Only Join propaganda. Hey, it's destroying. Are, are, are we just gonna? Are we gonna hit bedrock with the dipshittery here? Kids. It is. I mean, TikTok is the only them. propaganda site that is not controlled by U.S. intelligence. It's the only reason that the government's talking about it. That is all. So I, I like what. So, so Twitter is controlled by the CIA, and so is Facebook. No, what do you, don't? She's not even looking at him. She's putting her hand over, like I have to give some semblance of. Uh, I have to accept what you say because you're a guest on my show. I can't go. Fuck, are you talking about? That you brought that up. Um, so <laughs> I'm glad you brought that. So up. I want to. I'm going to play here. We, we have this thing that you may not know, Adam, um, we call it welfare check, where people can call in and uh, voice their opinions on certain things that we're talking about. Okay, so it's completely unbiased and stuff. It's kind of just like, um, you know, the, the, the quality of input you'll get from an online Twitter poll. You know, if they hate me, that's fine, too. They can let us know at 888-969-5113. Uh, and we had a particular call talking about when we were discussing the a supposed TikTok ban or proposed TikTok ban. Uh huh. And and the nice thing is, is when you're talking about something like TikTok, it's very important to take random calls from strangers that you don't have to verify who the fuck they are, and they certainly don't have to hit it, sit in studio and totally aren't Glenn Beck doing a voice. And, um, and this is what he had to say. The one thing I did want to say was the the subject of TikTok. I know that you're just dead set against it. You don't like it, but I, I think don't like that TikTok is, is what, what they're he's trying saying. to do with the ban TikTok ban is a Trojan horse. I think if we allow them to censor or eliminate what children can see, next thing you know, I won't be able to show them uh, eight millimeter stag movies in my garage while pretending it's a, a Cub Scout meeting. You know, it's hell. Okay. Eliminate or ban TikTok, then what platform is next? And 
I, I guess anyone that's controlled by a foreign government as opposed to one that's a private company or is licensed in the United States or follows the privacy laws of the United States. I mean, I mean, why don't you just take a shit on a flag while you're at it? Anytime mm -hmm. we give these shit bags. <laughs> give these shit bags. I like this any guy. Kind of a, <laughs> no. a little He's bit of room people. to come in and abuse that power. Uh, I, I, I know that. Yeah, I know what you mean, man. It, it, first thing, uh, first thing, like, okay, we want stoplights, and like, well, you fall for it, you know. That first they gave us stop signs, and I was, and and I didn't pay attention. Then they tried this yield bullshit, trying to make me be polite to oncoming traffic. I don't know what the fuck that is. And then these shit bags all of a sudden want me to stay on my side of the road. Fuck off. You're you're addressing the 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 child stuff that, mm -hmm. that these kids are accessing through TikTok. But on the flip side of that... Uh, on the flip side of that are adults, and there's no limitation on what adults can see everywhere else. Uh, uh, everywhere else. The res responsibility is the parents. The parents should be doing their damn job and being... Yeah, but you can't legislate it, so you can't... Again, this is fucking lazy. Don't have conversations about what parents should be doing when you're talking about the government. Either Here's what you... Either the, the government can limit things or they can't. If they can, what can they limit? If they can't limit some things, then fucking say it. Don't be a, a, like a weaselly little tit about it. Good Lord. Just so fucking lazy. Yes, I'm early today because I have a thing. I got to leave at 4 o'clock on the news. Parents and not allowing that I access totally to the kids. Yeah, but so what? Do you think everybody's gonna? Jesus Christ. I guarantee that motherfucker was drinking before he was 21. Guarantee it. I can tell from his accent. Unless it's just a you know a Russian agent who's really got it down, you know what I'm saying? So I there's nothing right. that I yeah, I, there's nothing that I disagree with him on. That, uh, yeah, especially the part about uh uh Ron DeSantis being a shitbag. I think that I think that's the part I of all the part elements of it, I think guys, right? That was the part that really stood out to me um, was that uh, Ron DeSantis and his shit bags um, apparently give them a, an inch and they'll take a mile. I'm there. Um, the TikTok ban, to your point, Adam. So It's a government-owned website. Stop. Stop. I don't want to hear any anti-government shit while you're defending a government-owned website. A government-owned social media. This is the same shit with RT. These motherfuckers, they're going to shut down free speech. They ran RT out of the country. RT's not free speech. RT is the, the state message from Russia. And guess what? If they want to say something, they can have a fucking press conference. They don't have to have pretend fucking news. How about that? What the fuck do we need RT for when the Kremlin can just come out and go, this is what we think, this is what we do. Right? Who gives a shit? So if we could root out whether or not it is an, an actual national security risk, which I would say it is. <laughs> Look at the fucking, the ping pong match going on in this dipshit's head. Not just because it's controlled by the CCP. Uh, yeah, not just that reason. That, that's not enough of a reason. <laughs> the fuck um but because <laughs> god damn they are our children are in a mental health crisis because of that app <laughs> but i'm still not sure if i want to allow um you know <clears throat> the cuz the government cuz i couldn't do it personally and what we do as a democracy is we through our representative government, we create laws that we all agree on, you know, largely, and then we implement them to, you know, for the protection of the citizenry beyond the end of our fucking nose. And, um, but I'm not, I don't know. I mean, can't we, you can't, you can't make an omelet without uh, losing some kids to could infections from cutting, I guess. I feel like you could make the argument that it's a national security risk. Now, what we. Yes. The White House is making precisely that argument. We found out later on the TikTok ban is that the way that it was written, of course, gives them the ability to get rid of like any social media or website. So it was absolutely. 
No, it doesn't. No, it fucking doesn't. No, it does not. A Trojan horse. Yes, everything is. Every yeah. bill always is. Yeah. Every bill always is a Trojan horse. That's. I forgot that. They erased that verse from Schoolhouse Rock. I'm just a bill, but I'm hiding a bill that will allow me to see you and kill because the DARPA Raider Jewish space lasers are firing and all the Congress people are up there lying that this is a bill about school buses when it'll kill you and all of your dumb maggot friends. So I'm just a bill and I'm hiding a bill. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. At least he doesn't look like a paranoid prepper dickhead. Yeah, it's a slippery uh, slope. I think the other issue we're looking at with DeSantis and talking about all this is conservatives have this point of always saying, who the fuck is this guy, by the way? Because if he's not a, a TV preacher, I don't know what's happening. Conservatives never really do anything. They're always talking about something to do things. DeSantis yeah. actually does things. Mm -hmm. Right, which you are scared of. Maybe, hey, hey uh, 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 come here. There's two, there's two reasons why conservatives might not do anything. One is, they don't actually give a fuck. It's better to talk about the problem and not solve it because you can scare the fuck out of people and see, you know, Trump slash border, and we'll deal with that later. Um, but the other reason might be that every time they try to do something, you motherfuckers think it's a Trojan horse for more government control because you're fucking lunatics. When he puts his boots on the ground, he gets things done. His, his high heel boots. <laughs> don't say boots when you're trying to support him. I mean, did, did, I mean, come on, man. Come on. <laughs> so we can't sit here and say Republicans aren't doing anything. DeSantis is doing something. But we hate it. And we don't want him to do anything. And doing, any, doing things is the problem with government. Right? Right? Is it right? Right? Maybe we should let it play out because someone is finally pushing back. Right. In the Jesus Christ. That... Uh what, what what was the TikTok fucking ban bill? Oh God! Areas that we do want pushback, and someone has to make the hard decisions. So we can. Why is it a hard decision? It, it, the only reason it's a hard decision in this case is because your own supporters are fucking paranoid lunatics. This you, you know, this would be one of those things that would be a bipartisan issue on a lot of fronts, especially if you if it was well crafted and well done. This would be a moment where where DeSantis could have argued about being bipartisan, reaching across the aisle and trying to come to it because we're concerned about uh, right. We're concerned about children's health, and we all agree that this is not appropriate. And what's there's so much stuff out there? There's no way. And if these private companies aren't going to police themselves, and we'll have to do it for them. And there you go, right? <laughs> but it, right. But then in the meantime, it, DeSantis can't do that. He cannot. You know why? Because assholes like this are like, oh, right. All right. There he is. Hey, look at him fucking passing a bill. Now, what does that mean? Probably means they can fucking they're reading my thoughts right now. They can read right. right fine. Yeah. Yeah. OK. Yeah. Next time on the long haired ginger, uh, you know, uh, kill list. Fine. Fine. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I, I understand buses have to stop at train tracks. But what's next? Trains have to stop at stations? The whole place is fucked. It's The world is crazy. You can sit here and convince left and right all day long about it, but here is a conservative. Left and right? This is all right vetching. There's no... None of us are convet... What the fuck? This is all you, dum-dum. ...who actually has his interest in children and taking care of them and doing something about it. Yeah. Well, there's a, the, the other issue that gets me is... <laughs> is you know, when you want government to do something and you don't want government to do anything at the same time and you get what I would call a brain cramp. Is why do we need these giant bills? Like Okay. <clears throat> all right, all right. This is, uh, we're going straight for I hate reading. Why are they always like, do you remember, like, you've got, yeah. you got, you got to, what is it? I was going to do your Nancy Pelosi. Why did Nancy do this? You've got to, you got to, like, pass it before you can read it. We have to pass the bill so we can find out what's in it. There you go. So, why isn't this bill three pages long? Right.
Why? That's I mean, wh which bill? The 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 TikTok. Hold on. Wait one second. Chat room. Hang out for a second. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, text of DeSantis social media kid bill. Something like that. We find it there. Uh, Ron DeSantis signs Florida social media ban for children into law. Uh, ba -ba -da -ba -da -da -da. There's the Florida governor signs legislation. There's the text of it. Let's see. Jacksonville. Da -da -da, so, uh, social media specifically in this bill prevents minors from. Where's the? T of course he wouldn't have the text of the fucking bill. Why would I? Why would I expect that on the Florida website? Jackass. Um, where's the text of it? Uh, let's see, this comes after DeSantis vetoed a similar bill under the same name earlier this month. So they made some of the signed HB3 of the Online Protection for Minors bill. Okay, here it is. Uh, Florida. There's, here, okay, this is view bill sign, legislation, view by category, bill history, related bill, track this bill. Where's the fucking blah blah blah? Okay, here it is. Bill text. There you go. This is the, this is the bill. Okay, this is the, the whole thing. This, uh, all right, let, uh, let me hear what he's going to say first, and then I want to show you the actual bill. Here you go. Why does this bill have to be so long? What, 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 which, what was this one, like 600 pages or it's, something? It's giant and nobody reads it. Everyone's like, ah, oh, whatever. So it's that, that to me. Again, it's kind of like a great analogy of government, right? It's just way too big mm -hmm. and way too complicated. It doesn't need to be that complicated. Yes. It should be stripped down and every American should know and be able to know what is in that bill mm -hmm. instead of like, hey, listen, this is a bill about... All right, hold on. Back the fuck up. Why? That's I mean, like it, it, what, what, which, what was this one? Like 600 pages? Or hold on, back up. Which one? Why do we need these giant bills? Why do we need, he just starts, okay, apropos of fucking nothing, they're talking about the DeSantis bill. They, they don't talk. The other issue that gets me. The other issue that gets me, this is still talking about the DeSantis bill. Is, why do we need these giant bills? Why do we need these giant bills? Now, maybe he's thinking about the TikTok ban bill that went through the House and Senate. But so far, they've been talking about this. One. Like, why are they always like, do you remember, like, you've got, yeah. you got, you got to, what is it? I was going to do your Nancy Pelosi. Well, Nancy, you, do you, this you time got to, you now. got to, like, pass it before you can read it. We have to pass the bill so we can find out what's in it. There you go. <laughs> so why isn't this bill three pages long? Right. Okay. So the, this is 600 pages uh, versus three pages. This is the argument. It, this is the bill. This is the Florida House of Representatives uh, um, bill. There you go. This would be the whole thing. 24 legislator. There's uh, page three of 20. This is a 20 page bill. Takes effect January 1st, 2025. So get your TikTok in now, kids, because uh, an act relating to online protection of minors creating 501-1736 FS, defining terms requiring social media platforms to prohibit certain minors from creating new accounts, requiring social media platforms to terminate certain accounts and provide additional options for termination of such accounts, meaning parents can opt out of it if they find out, blah, blah, blah. Uh, uh, under which social media platforms are required to prohibit certain minors from entering into contracts to become ad uh, account holders, authorize the Department of Legal Affairs to bring actions under Florida Deceptive and Unfair Trade Practices Act for knowing and reckless violations. Blah, blah, blah. So they, it, part of the reason why these bills are long, dumb, dumb, is because you have to define what the fuck you're talking about every single time. Because law, it, it, it becomes a law, and then other laws... Legal cases, civil and and oftentimes criminal, will be based on that fucking law. If someone violates it, they will either violate it civilly or they will violate it criminally. And and if they go to court and they go, they didn't even say what a social media company qualifies as. It could be anything, right? So that's why there's 16 fucking pages defining social media as they know it based on it. Like the entire, like that's that's why these fucking things are long because they are legally binding documents. You fucking moron. That's why. God damn it, it's annoying. I'm sick of this shit about people like, oh, that's a lot of words. Like, motherfucker, if your rep is too fucking lazy to read 20 pages and tells you that a 20-page bill is 600 pages, 
Don't bitch at the bill or the concept of governing. Your fucking your your problem among many, your problem is with your rep. Stop electing lazy fuckheads who don't like government. You wouldn't hire a babysitter who hates kids. Why do you hire a fucking government, you know, representative who hates government? I hate the federal government in the swamp of LA. That's why I, I want you to elect me to go there and spend the next two years there, maybe more, and I'll just keep going back. If any, I don't want a single politician, fuck term limits, if, I don't want to hear a single politician that bitches about the swamp try to get reelected. I don't want to hear it. Because it, it, getting elected the first time, we'll give you a pass. But the second time, you want to stay in the swamp, apparently. You're like, fuck this. I'm going back to the state level. We'll fight it out there. Right? I ran for Congress and I was said I was a sitting senator or congressperson for two years or six years or whatever. I'm like, this is bullshit. They're all up there for everybody. I'm going back to Wyoming. We'll fight it out here. We got plenty of shit. We'll be able to do it ourselves and we'll show them. Or here's an idea. Join me on this one. Here's an idea, Mr. Fucking the government can't do anything, right? Go show us how it's done in the private sector, you bootstrapping motherfucker. Start a, a, a street paving company that out that can sell its services to states and, and governments, like local governments, that will lay roads for them without government funding. Cheaper and more resiliently with better technology than everybody else. Huh? How about that? Why? Go I mean... Like, the government can't do anything right. Elect me and I'll prove it. That's the that's the Marjorie Taylor Greene rally cry. What what which what was this one like six hundred pages or it's, something? It's just giant and nobody reads it. Everyone's like ah oh, whatever. So it's that, that to me again. It's kind of like a great analogy of government, right? It's just way too big mm -hmm. and way too complicated. It doesn't need to be that complicated. Yes, it does. Yeah, it does. It needs to be really fucking complicated. We have 340 million people. We have 2,000 plus religions in this country. We have myriads of languages. We have different education levels and different education capabilities. We have people with disabilities and we have people with extreme abilities. We have technology that we're using that is the cutting edge futuristic technology that will change the world forever. And then we still smelt iron the same way we've been doing it since the process was invented. It's fucking complicated. And if you don't like complicated shit, don't go into government and don't start a big company. Go fucking Etsy your way through life, which I totally respect. <laughs> but don't bitch about complexity. Good Lord. I'm not impressed. I'm not impressed. Shit. It should be stripped down and every American should know and be able to know what is in that bill. Mm -hmm. They do. It's online. But you shouldn't have to go through it every fucking year and, and fucking redline the fucking bill. And if you want to, by the way, if you're one of these motherfuckers who shows up at your right-wing representative's office and goes, what the fuck is this shit about somebody doing like, a, like an art program for inner city kids in fucking Michigan? I live in Iowa. This is bullshit, right? Knock yourself the fuck out. It's online, you dumb motherfucker. Go read it. Go bitch at your rep, and your rep will tell you that they got outvoted. And you're, if you're that fired up about it, start a fucking website. Do a fucking YouTube show every goddamn day about why inner, kid, inner city kids should not be, you know, learning art. And convince everybody and then get the bill undone. Welcome to democracy, fuckwise. Instead of like, hey, listen, this is a bill about healthcare, but let's just take over all student loans, right? Like, let's just, is that what happened? <laughs> Tell me you never read it without actually admitting you never read it. Is that what happened? We had a health care bill and they just took over all student loans. Is that what happened? So banks can't give out student loans anymore. The government does all of it. Or maybe, just maybe, uh, banks and lending institutions don't uh, have a tendency to loan people to, you know, money for education a lot of times unless they are clearly not needing it. 
They wouldn't loan it. To, they only loan it to money who already to people who already have the cash on hand. They've got collateral, as it were, um, and they don't tend to do it for the people who need it the most. You know why? Because you can't repossess an education. They got to pay for the teachers that teach you, and those teachers got to fucking pay their rent and eat and do all kinds of shit. And once that money's spent, it's spent. And they can't come get you and, like, fucking spoon the education out of the top of your goddamn skull. That's, that's why the government's in the fucking student loan business. That's why it's, like, people ditch out on their student loans all the fucking time. There's no, uh, there's no incentive to do it. If you want anybody to do it, and that might be the issue, we might, they might not want anybody to do it because he's got his kids going to a private school that denies, uh, you know, them the ability to use social media. So more than likely, he's got them on a track to go to a school he can pay for. And you know, you know, and by the way, he's from a socialist country in that regard, as far as medicine goes. So they don't have to worry about that cost. So he, and and I don't know what the education throughput right is on. You know, for kids going to a private school, if they, you know. You jump up into the the next private school. You get on a list, essentially, or something like like New York private schools and shit like that. Uh, we need to demand this of them, or yeah. we need to say, look, it's going to be. I'd love it if they had like a five page maximum of any bill, right? Like yeah. that's it. Right. It's got to be five pages. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there won't be any loopholes in that. Hey, hey, guess what? The bills used to be five pages. And then lawyers and the Epsteins of the world and people like that found their way around it. You know, ah, you left out a, like it says it, not, you know, it, he or she. So if it's a he or she, then fuck you. This doesn't apply to me. So, Your Honor, uh, we want the whole thing thrown out. Ah, fuck. Next time. It, he, he, it, re you know, referencing an it, a he or she in each of the. All right. Uh, and then, by the way, most of the bills, when they update them, it's an update. I'll show you right here. The, uh, the the changes, look at this, see these little things? Coding, words stricken are deletions, words underlined are additions. So in this particular bill, they, they, un, they added all this. See this part? Since the last version of the bill. This is all added because the first one didn't pass. Because without, but you want to argue about how much shit there should be in a bill and that they're too complicated and there's too much text. Uh, DeSantis wouldn't sign it until they added all of this underlined text. See that? Word stricken or deletions, words underlined or additions. They're not, he's not cutting shit out of the old version. They're adding it. The original bill was probably three pages and it couldn't pass because it was too fucking vague and unenforceable. That's the other thing too. It, pass your fucking three page bill and the SCOTUS will throw it out because it's too vague and unenforceable. And nobody knows whether it applies to them. The more freedoms you have, I got news for you. The more freedoms you have, the more complicated your legal system gets. It's super easy to write. Fuck it. You know what? You know what used to work? Fucking kings. They wrote a one-page proclamation. And any it, like if they didn't like how some of it was going, like if, if you're like, yeah, but it didn't say exactly. They just fucking kill you. It was super easy. Monarchies are big fans of big, like, single note fucking bills. Right. You should be able to um, uh, explain it in a PowerPoint. Yeah. How about you should be able to understand it? Can you dictate understanding? No then you cannot dictate explanation. Also, I could, um, hey, um, uh, I could uh, also argue that you can put all these things in a fucking PowerPoint. As a matter of fact, the committees do, but if they did everything one at a time and started from scratch every year, uh, we would have the, we'd have the economy of Guatemala. And that's it. And, and just strip literally all the way down so they can stop being so shady and slimy i mean they're not being shady and slimy the people who try to find their way around the law are being shady and slimy dumb dumb we're really doing this like american citizens are saying this all the time like what yeah they're not thinking first though. why are you betraying us constantly
Is that what you're saying? Gee, I can't imagine why conservatives can't get anything done when they're getting calls like that. Why are you betraying us constantly? I'm, I'm not your fucking girlfriend, motherfucker. I'm your state representative. It's a democracy. We're all in this together. It's a country, not a county. What the fuck's wrong with you? Right. You would have loved my speech on January 6th. Um Jesus Christ. Um, they never talked about it. I actually gave a speech behind that lectern, and it covered all three of those things. No more. But you can't. Is it a speech if it's, well, I guess, how far behind the lectern? Treason, no more traitors, and we're voting on one budget item at a time. Yeah. Yeah, brilliant. It's a great idea. And uh, one, one, one budget, I define one budget item at a time. We're going tank by tank, bullet by bullet. Welcome to the world of never getting anything done. This is one of those motherfuckers who comes into a corporation and goes, why do you even have a board or management? This is fucked up. Why don't we just, how about this? How about all us workers just run up to the boss's office and tell him what car we'd like to decide? We don't have to decide on what car now. We'll all just storm up to the office and just start shouting car designs at him. What the fuck? And I think it solves everything. If you like this clip. <laughs> yeah. That's why you're on the blaze in this, like, uh, at the ass end of the blaze spectrum and not an elected representative and why no one would elect you to office, you fucking lunatic. Jesus Christ. What a mess. Um, anyways, did we ever, did you guys see in that, in the TikToking of this TikTok uh, argument, did you see them ever come to a conclusion? Hmm? Hmm? They solved nothing. A total just circle jerk about what they don't agree on. And what was the the final thought in that? What wrapped up? And it's so fucking Glenn Beck. The, the wrap up on this entire thing was things are too complicated. They always try to put stuff in there. It's just crazy. Like, why can't we? It should be really simple. Just one thing at a time. Good Lord. Like, what better explanation uh, do you need of why these people do not need to be near any positions of power ever? Because they can't cope with more than one detail at a time. Jesus Christ. It's like, uh, it's it, mumbo versus jumbo, right? It's the great wrestling match in their fucking head. How, how does anybody, like, Listen to that and go, this is this is a political discussion. It's not. It's three people bitching about shit they have no idea about. And they never came to a decision. I'm like, they, they're both like, I'm against it. I think it's terrible. I think it's clear the CCP owns it and they're trying to manipulate children. It's terrible for their mental health. But when the but a government ban, I don't know. Okay, asshole. Then explain to me why there's a ban on child porn. It's obviously damaging to children. It's you know, why, why, if you're a free speech absolutist, I'm calling you out. Tell me why. Because I'm against it, and I think it's a very clear delineation. I don't have any, I, I don't waffle on it at all. Ban that shit. And anybody who engages in it or sells it or carries it around, throw them in fucking jail for the, for the fucking run. End of story. I'm good. Right? That's it. Uh, uh, did you see any kind of like, but, but, no, fuck that, no, bye, that's it. Pretty fucking simple. Now, I want these assholes to explain to me why a rule limiting that uh, is somehow uh, a violation of freedom of, uh, you know, or, or I guess argue how it's not a, a violation of the freedom of speech. Because I, I mean, it's technically, it's proof that like the freedom of speech is not absolute. It is not absolute. You can't yell fire in a crowd theater. You can't engage in that kind of shit. Fuck them. Right? I, I think that's reasonable. But they can't ha even have that conversation because then we get into what's the difference between a gun that you use for self-defense and a gun you use to mow down a bunch of your fucking coworkers. If you need more than 30 rounds, it's not self-defense, motherfucker. You're, tr you're planning on killing cops and soldiers or your coworkers or people at your fucking school. And if you do want those kind of things, 
sign up for a fucking militia, a well-regulated militia. Go, hey, I'm one of these guys that has all these guns and stuff like that, just so you know. And uh, I'm not stockpiling for the great day of the rope or a racist psychopath who, you know, can't wait for the Turner Diary to be, you know, turned into a series, you know, on on vet flicks or whatever the fuck they think it's going to be turned into. Right? I'll sing the Bill song again. I can't. I just made it up. I'll post it, though. I, I, I saved it as a clip, so... You can, by the way, you guys can clip stuff from the show and and put it out all you want. So, oh my god, just fucking. Ugh. All right, what I'm? Let's see how much time do I have? Okay, about a little under forty five minutes. Um, which I think I'll only be able to do a little bit. This is Trump did this gathering. Hold on, at um, this is his stop the Biden border ba- uh, bloodbath thing. Biden's border bloodbath, he thinks, has a nice ring to it. And this has got Stephen Miller all over it. But um, I don't know why we give him credit. He's probably not the brains behind this. He's just so fucking gross. We assume that if it's horrifying um, and it's articul- articulated even moderately well, Trump thought it up as an idea and and Stephen Miller put the fucking Goebbels spit polish on it because he looks like him. So, um, anyways, this... Uh, anybody who was defending Trump about the, this was the bloodbath thing. They just went after him. Uh, it's, is eating so much crow and Trump is fucking not like feeding it to him raw. So, um, and I think he, yeah, there's no audio. There's audio for the music. And then he, this guy introduces Trump. Or he gets to say J. something. Trump president of the United States, president Donald J Trump. I, I honest for a second, I thought that guy said gay Trump all of a sudden. It was like, what? And like, he just like steps out. Hey, I've been here the whole time. Like that clown with the balloons in the Stephen King thing. I'm always here. I'm hanging out. Okay. And by the way, this is his. Uh, new DHS tools began uh, like uh, um, uh, Trump tariff threat leads to Mexican cooperation, all this kind of shit. And then look at the fucking border after this or whatever. Um, yellow being the recidivism, uh, no doubt. Um, or this is like these are these are criminals. These are the mental institution, and then these are the some are good people. The red is is like women and children. I'm not used to walking out here without having to stand around listening to all of uh, God Bless the USA by Lee Greenwood. You've got a Bible? Everybody's got to get a Bible. <laughs> so his whole thing right now is he's on um, uh, on an innocent victim tour. So he's going around just kind of like um, piggybacking on anybody who's been harmed by a by an immigrant. He's going to call it migrant crime. And even if that person was let in while he was president, all that kind of shit. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. It's an honor to be here. The weather was a little rough, but there was no way I was going to miss it. And I uh, see we have a lot of media here. That's nice. It's always nice. They're our deep friends, right? <laughs> but we're getting better over the years, much better. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're treating you. you. You seem to be closer to them. Um, also it's local. It's also RSBN. And I don't know if this is, I don't know what NTD is that North Korean, but I do want to, uh, say hello to everybody. There's a special, well, go ahead. Uh, we'll wait to place to me and we're going to have a big victory. The polls are looking tremendous in Michigan and Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're totally going to scoop up all those, uh, Muslims that don't like Joe Biden because he built a fucking pier to get resources to the Palestinians. And uh, we are, we're going to do something I think that's very, very special. I think it's very special. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a very special. That's epic news. Is it, Kale Inc.? Oh, that figures. Special election. I've been saying November 5th of this year is going to be the most important day in the history of our country. I believe that. Yeah, you're a ridiculous person. Like, no individual uh, election is ever more important than the signing of the Declaration of Independence or the end of the Civil War. Like, you are calm the fuck down. You're a one-termer. So just remember that we're here. Yeah, remember remember that I said it, even if it isn't. This afternoon in Grand Rapids. 
Oh, there's a tornado from Louisville, Frankfurt. Oh, gosh, I got to check in on my mom. Hold on. Rapids, Michigan, 1,283 miles from the southern border. You've been hearing a lot about the southern border over the last couple of years. We put up. <laughs> yes, because you can't talk about the economy uh, much because because uh, you're fucked. Uh, you. OK. Um, is there a tornado? <laughs> above you right now <laughs> checking on my mom <laughs> we'll check she might call in so give me a second um the chart which is uh <laughs> do you mean the chart you just walked by that you looked left for tell me again how uh joe biden doesn't know where anything is which uh you guys saw the chart, right? He was standing in front of it. Big, bright, obviously, the chart. Southern border over the last couple of years. We put up a chart, which is uh, border. Over there. Related. And you see the lowest point. What the fuck? <laughs> nice output. NTD.com. Look at that. It, 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 look, I'm glad they rechart. They, hey, they're using the focus magnifier. I think that's smart. Uh, they keep their battery up. That's, it's, uh, they are recording to an SD card, so uh, obviously, and they're recording, I guess, outward, so there's some sort of signal, maybe HDMI, and then that's, uh, that's how much, uh, that much time they got left on the, on the, on the hard drive there, for recording it. Also, um, I guess this is the framing that they're trying to hit the, maybe next time, do a clean out, there's a little setting on there, I'm not helping, I'm not gonna help. In history, it was just before I left. <laughs> yes, just before, what was also, just before you left, what was going on in the world that might have slowed down traffic in of every sort? Just as I was leaving, that was... Yeah, just as you were leaving, like the COVID just getting as bad... The lowest yeah. point, you see the arrows pointing? And Uh-huh, yeah. It, <laughs> it was almost like the survival rate of maggots. I think that chart spells out better than anything I can say today. In fact, I don't have to say anything. I can just leave, just take a... He's trying to steal uh, Biden's, like, quote while you're ahead bit, but he can't. Um, also, uh, uh, citation needed. They, I guess they put this in. Um, Look at that. That is the, uh, that is the, the best. And then it looks like a rock. Biden world record illegal immigrants, many from prisons and mental institutions and te also terrorists. <laughs> Nothing. Jesus Christ. This is like one of those things that guy walks up to you on the street and he's got like a bunch of paper tied with string that has his manifesto in it. This is this is fucking crazy. This is like if you put like Trump's fucking brain fart about this stuff into AI and it just spit out like, give me a really crazy graph of what I think. <laughs> New D. Look at this spike. Trump tariff threat to Mexico. New DHS tools go in place, whatever. And then it's right about here. Still higher than everybody else. And then all of a sudden, COVID hits. And right. Rocket chip went off. Uh, when you look at the other numbers, it's a shame. Also, I don't know what the yellow, blue, and red is. They don't, you can't see. So, and again, it's largely recidivism. It's a sad shame. It is a sad shame. Those are the worst kind. The sad shame. It's like the shim sham shame. Yeah, it's the shamey shame. It's like uh, it's like the sham wow of shame. Under crooked Joe Biden, every state is now a border state. Every town is now a border town. Okay, you're a crazy person. No, it isn't. Because Joe Biden has brought the carnage and chaos and killing from all over the world. The carnage, the chaos, and the killing. This is this is just how you hypnotize maggots is with alliteration. And dumped it straight into our backyards. That's right. Yeah. Don't go in your backyard, ladies and gentlemen, just full of carnage and murderous, psychotic immigrants right now. Don't, don't look. Don't look. I know some of you have a window right now. Don't look. Do not look. People are coming in from prisons and mental institutions and nobody's ever seen anything like it under the Trump. Yeah, certainly not in the last three years. Administration, we had a tough policy of getting the bad people out. We wanted to get them out. We took them out by the thousands and we took... Uh, as an example, the MS-13 gangs out, uh, the countries didn't want to let them back in. And I said, well, then we're not giving you any money. We give them so much money, this case, 793 
million dollars. I said, that's okay. We're not going to give you any money. And they said, well, we'd be glad to have MS-13 coming back into our country. Okay, this is the Cliff Notes version of the normal show he veers off okay. into. Be an honor. And uh, they took him back, but they wouldn't take him back under Obama. Under the Obama administration with Biden, they wouldn't take him back. And I was told that they won't take him back. And I said, really, what do we give them? And it was close to $800 million. I said, tell them we're not giving it to them anymore. And they immediately said, let's take him back. That was Didn't he just say that? I mean, I, I understand how propaganda works. you got to repeat it. But I, it feels like he doesn't realize he just told that story already. It was about that lasted that negotiation. Sheriffs lasted about three minutes and we succeeded. That was an easy one. Now under Biden, the bad ones are coming in at a level that nobody ever thought was even possible. Nobody. What? Yeah, definitely sundowning. Uh, I think this is after. Yeah, this is done in the evening. So probably thought this was possible in Venezuela. Yeah, I don't think anything's possible anymore. I, I, I mean, you know, Biden will say it's a you know land of possibilities, but nobody thinks this is possible. I don't believe in. Yeah, it's possible. It's just impossible. But the crime is down 67 percent from what it was a year and a half ago because they're taking all of their gangs and all of their criminals and they're depositing them into the United States of America. Wait, sorry. Venezuelan crime is down because they're sending their criminals here? You don't think they would just kind of catch a flight back? And especially if they were like active criminals, maybe they, you know, I mean, why would, why would you want to come here where you can, you know, we actually have a functioning FBI and a functioning police force. Basically, he's just insulting all these guys behind him. Like they release them in the United States and these guys come straight here instead of staying in Mexico where they could fuck around and crime forever, join another gang, you know, go on a murder spree, whatever their thing is. They got to come up to the United States because you fuckers aren't going to do anything like what? How, is, how are they supposed to take that? America, Venezuela, think of it, their crime. Wouldn't we love to have a statistic where crime is down 67%? Ours is only going in one direction. No, it's actually coming down. It is going in one direction, but it's going down. And it's going to be very bad now because we have a new form of crime. It's called migrant crime. That's new? So no, no, no migrants committed any crimes while you were in office? No? There weren't any? That people, if they wanted to just kind of go digging around. They're having fistfights with our police officers, right? Are, are, are they? All the time? Somebody go check your backyard. Are there, is there a fistfight going on between the police and migrants happening? Or is he talking about a video that people have watched over and over again that people who follow Donald Trump are so fucking doe-headed that they think if they see the same video twice, it happened twice? In the middle of streets. In the middle of streets. Okay, this is obviously a different video than we've seen. They're sending prisoners. Mur Maybe he means the middle of the block, I guess. You know. Murderers, drug dealers, mental patients, and terrorists. The worst they have in every country all over the world. This isn't just in South America. No, no, no. They could possibly be. Uh, uh, you know, to the level of crime we have here. Mm. They're coming from the Congo. And the thing is, he doesn't even have to talk about anecdotal deaths of American citizens because we've all seen it. We can barely go outside. It's carnage everywhere. I mean, carnage is a is a strong word, you know, and if it's relatively rare, then obviously it's not carnage. It's, it's site-specific carnage, I guess. Oh, from Yemen, from Somalia, from Syria. They come from all over the world. China. <laughs> They're... Mm -hmm. Many of them are military age, which is a very strange. You don't see very many women coming in. and You, you see a lot of women coming in, actually. And uh, the, as far as the military age males, I would uh, like to remind you, we refer to them as roofing age males um, on here because that's or or, for example, uh, uh, bridge building age males, considering that eight out of the or six out of eight of the people who were uh, injured on the bridge collapse Six who died, eight, two more were injured. All of them were migrants. Now, six of them dead. He's not going, look what happens. The migrants work in very difficult positions, and we got to be grateful that they're here. And these people came through legally, and we should applaud the fact that they came through legally, and they applied, and we got these, and they've been working here for a long time. They have lovely families and stuff. Six of them right there. Why would you do that when you can go find uh, one lady who was killed uh, in Georgia or another lady who was killed by her boyfriend in Michigan, which is what he's, you know, why he's there, um, who happened to be a migrant. And so that guy 
even though she was dating him and it was it was domestic violence it's supposed to be like he's trying to scare the the, the suburban ladies that this guy, you're going to start dating one of these guys and then he's going to shoot you. You see a lot of them coming in about 19 to 25, 26 years old. And especially from China, we have 29,000 over the last few months. Okay. By the way, update for my mom because people were worried. I'm okay right now. Our clouds are sunny. Drove from uh, Cleveland and you know, hit the bad rain in Cincy. Uh, Jill said tornado hit buildings next to theirs, but theirs was okay. We're on watch till 10 p.m. Okay. We'll, be, we'll keep checking in. 29,000 from China, and they all seem to be uh, perfectly fit for military service. Ready for... No, no, we've actually seen these folks, and there's a good portion of them that are women. The idea that all 30, like, all thir like 30,000 Chinese people have been found at the border. First of all, we know that's where they're from, so you know that's where they're from, and they're not... They're getting asylum, probably coming from China. I don't know why... You wouldn't expect that there'd be some people who live in China who don't want to live under a communist dictatorship. Probably would want them to come here, then anyway, whatever. But the idea is that the idea that they're all military age males is just fucking military dumb. service is crazy. It's crazy. They also, you know, the age that you do military service. Also, a uh, good uh, strawberry picking age, I guess. You don't. Your back doesn't hurt. You're not old. This is country changing, it's country threatening, and it's country wrecking. They have wrecked our country. It's country wrecking. <laughs> wrecking? Country wrecking? You wrote that down. That's that's a thing. Country. He, 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 somebody put country changing, I guarantee, in Sharpie next to it. It says country wrecking. But I stand before you today to declare the Joe Biden's border bloodbath, and that's what it is. It's a bloodbath. They tried to use that term incorrectly on me two weeks ago you know it's all about misinformation that's all they do is how are they misinforming people he's literally correcting this that it is about migrants killing people that's what he's talking about everybody was like he's talking about cars he's not fucking talking about cars cheat on elections and disinformation misinformation fairly closely related those two words yes i think there's only really one letter difference but uh, you know a tremendous difference in the meaning and you know an in intent but they basically mean that uh, it's all talk, but it's a border blood. Is that what they mean? They basically mean it's all talk. Bloodbath, and it's destroying our country. It's a very bad thing happening. It's uh, going to end on the day that I take office, which will be January 20th. It'll end. And... Thank you. I want to thank members of Congress. A lot of great congressmen are here, warriors, really. They've fought with me for a long time. John James, John Molinar, and Jack Bergman. They're great friends of mine, and they've... Uh, they yes, uh, and they're, they've been great friends all during the time that I've had difficulty pronouncing their names. Love your state. They love your state. You mean they love their state because it's their state? I want to really thank and congratulate because this guy has gone like a rocket ship. I've never seen it. Well, I have a couple of times. We've got a lot of people elected. Those endorsements are pretty good. But, you know, you still have to endorse the right person. Otherwise, it doesn't. Oh, this is the uh, the guy he's endorsing who's not a maggot, who's a moderate, but they think he's got a chance of winning. Work And uh, your next U.S. Senator, Mike Rogers, who's going to be fantastic wherever Mike is. Wherever. He's over by the... The, the poster board. He's standing by that. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mike. Uh, he was a great congressman. He was a tough guy, too. He had one little uh, sabbatical. He went to CNN for a little while, and it's okay, you know, they say kind of thing. <laughs> but, but other than that, uh, he's been great. Well, that's good, because now you'll get a few of the more moderate people who are being nice, but he's a, a very respected person. Uh, he's the one we wanted. It means voters, moderate voters will vote for him. That's the idea is that this is so fucking He's stupid. the one that decided to do it and he's going to be a fantastic, I think he's going to be. He's the one that decided to do it. That's how you pick somebody like, all right, we were having trouble running somebody and, uh, but he decided, yeah, okay. A fantastic U.S. Senator, always respected at the highest level. And uh, he was always fair to us, too. When he was on, when he did his television thing, he was always fair, strong, fair. Uh, I also want to thank Michigan Senate Republican leader Eric Nesbitt, 
Where is Eric? I think you're around here someplace, Eric. Good. Great job you're doing, Eric. Michigan House Republican leader, Matt Hall. Matt. I'd like to thank everybody, all these white people having easy to pronounce names. Also, um, get a little bit of a split there. You got to you got to bring the comb over a bit this way because it's starting to you're getting a little drift. Good. They stand right in the middle, those guys. Form- those like assholes. Former Detroit police chief James Craig. Good guy, too. Good guy. Good guy. Knows his way around and has done a great job. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, he managed to find his way there to the, that night. Very I guess. much. We have great support. I think he just supported uh, Mike, actually, didn't he? Did, yes, he? did he I did. hear that? That's, that's, a big, that's, that's a big endorsement. That's a great endorsement. Thank you, James. The second best. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you. Actually, Mike went up 61 points. Can you imagine that? He went up 61 points. Among Republicans in Ohio in the primary that they had. Calm down. And that's, uh, that's because everybody like because that's uh, that's the only people left. That's really a, that's quite a raise. It went up in one night and he's uh, I think that primary is over. I think he's focused now on the Democrat and the Democrats a radical left lunatic and uh, doesn't represent what Michigan stands for. I can tell you doesn't represent the auto workers. Uh, wants to do the all electric cars all over the place that are all going to be made in China. Uh huh. You mean the cars that don't go very far? So China's going to make a bunch of cars that um, don't go very far, and uh, so people are going to buy those, and so the market's going to reward cars that don't go very far. And uh, very bad. So I think I think that Mike Rogers is going to have tremendous success against her. Former Michigan Attorney General Bill Schuette, and uh, thank you, Bill, very much. Thank you. And many other distinguished guests. We've got a lot of people here, some ex-congressmen, some congressmen. I'm not going to go into it because we want to get down to business. We, yeah, yeah, get on with it. We want to just uh, get our country going again. We want to get the border closed, and we want to have people come into our country, but come in legally, right? Legally. Then pass the border. Moments back. ago, I met with an incredible group of local law enforcement leaders to discuss how Michigan communities are being ravaged by. Oh, my God. Somebody just tried to sideswipe the camera. A new form of crime, and that's the migrant crime that we name it. It should be called Biden migrant crime, but that's too long. But you'll always remember it was Biden that gave it to us. Yes, because no migrants have ever committed crimes in the United States until Joe Biden was president. And of course, the number of them is uh, lower or on average with how life works under everyone. It's so fucking weird. 11 days ago, right here in Kent County, a 25-year-old Michigan woman named Ruby Garcia, who's become a very well-known name. Oh, yes, Ruby Garcia. She was uh, killed by a migrant, I think. Beautiful young Beautiful young woman. Right? Was sa- She's like 17 years old. Savagely right? murdered by an illegal alien criminal. Yeah, just savagely murdered by an illegal alien criminal. She, she never met him. He was just... Under the Trump administration, this monster had been deported, thrown out of the country, wasn't going to be able to come back because you just... Because of the wall? Have to look at the charts. It was very, very hard to get in. Apparently not. If it's easy to get in now, and the wall existed. But he came back, and uh, we threw him out of the country and crooked Joe Biden took him back. Oh, the title 42, let him come back in, you know, and try as many times as he want to without being uh, detained and, and deported specifically. And so, it, cause he just, all you had to do was dump him back in Mexico and they could try again and again and again until they finally sneak back through. And let him back in and let him stay in. And he, he viciously killed Ruby, the illegal alien charged with Ruby's really heinous killing and he, this is somebody that had many, many arrests, including for uh, some very bad crimes that he committed. Well, I, I'm glad I'm glad they arrest him for the very bad crimes. They didn't arrest him for the very nice crimes. Committed, and he was set loose to roam our streets. Really? That's did they did they tell him that directly, or they're like, do they assign migrants to roaming specific streets, or is it just kind of a wandering? And thing? in this case, uh, set loose to Rome in Michigan. Okay, so they do get specific states. You're assigned to like, welcome to America. Um, I'm uh, the spokesperson for the Biden administration. Each of you will be assigned a state to roam around in until you find a victim. 
If you can't find a victim, we will assign one to you. By politicians that are left and weak and stupid. Okay. So they're the ones who assign it or whatever. So the, what, are the, what about the ones that don't stop them while they're there in the state or something? On March 22nd, he shot 17-year-old Ruby. Actually, she was uh, a beautiful, beautiful young woman. I, you already said that part, but she's 17. It's a little weird that you're saying beautiful young woman when she's 17. She's, you could say beautiful girl because she's a minor. Uh, Ruby Garcia was uh, shot multiple times with an illegally obtained handgun. Uh huh. Her body was dumped on the side of a highway, left to die, actually. Had a little life left, left to die. Just want to get that in there so you could feel the suffering right now. And uh, Ruby passed away, and it's been a big story because she passed away. She died. She was murdered. She didn't pass away. You could just, like, it's so weird. It's so horrible, some of these. It's so horrible that she, that, now, if we look into this, um, let's see, Jonathan from Michigan, What's the story on her? Uh, yeah. Okay, this is that. Up in Lincoln, New Town. Um, okay. She's not 17, by the way. She's 25. Um, and there you go. This is the... Because some of the stories I saw initially were that she was killed in a carjacking attempt, but she's, she wasn't. She was killed by, uh, she was dating the dude that killed her, I believe. Doesn't mean he didn't try to steal her car and killed her while it was happening, but. Um, out of Michigan Road, Trooper says, I'm just going to grab a Brandon Ortiz. Vite has been charged with felony murder. Um, See, Brandon Ortiz was previously arrested in Mexico in 2020. Uh, and Brandon Ortiz is currently being held in Kent County, Michigan. Jail is being charged with felony murder, open murder, carjacking, uh, carrying a concealed weapon and felony, use of firearm. The body of, was found. The pair had been in a romantic relationship at the time of the killing. Yeah, there you go. So this is the, the here's, our, here's our yeah but, everybody. So this is it. Previously deported illegal immigrant charged with murder of 25-year-old Michigan woman. Brandon Ortiz Vite, 25, was previously arrested and deported to Mexico in 2020. Under Title 42, uh, they did not, uh, it did not affect his ability to come back in and multiple times until he finally was able to get sneak through. Um, Title 42 was the problem. An illegal immigrant who was deported to his home country, Mexico, in 2020, has been accused of murder how many times, by the way? Um, I don't know why illegal immigrant is a hot link, but we'll see. Um, I'll move this over here. Um, Brandon Ortiz is currently being held in Kent County, Michigan jail. <clears throat> He's being charged with felony murder, open murder, carjacking, carrying a concealed weapon, and felony use of firearm, firearm after the body of a 25-year-old Ruby Garcia, who is not 17, um, was discovered on US-131 in downtown Grand Rapids and identified by investigators. The pair had been in a romantic relationship at the time of the killing, police said Tuesday at a news conference. A statement, Fox Digital, an immigration customs enforcement spokesperson confirmed that Ortiz was in the country illegally at the time of Garcia's death. Um, well, then he didn't get asylum. He wasn't uh, assigned to, to Rome, Michigan. I would, yeah. This is not random at all. Right. Uh, was arrested, uh, served a notice of period, was ordered removed by an immigration judge, uh, in September 24, 2020, removed Mexico September 29, 2020. Um, on March 24, 2024, they encountered him pursuant to him being arrested by the Michigan State Police and charged with murder and other crimes. Uh, Garcia's deceased body was found uh, with gunshot wounds by Michigan State Police near the roads of US 131. That's the road he was talking about. Vehicle sound, uh, found Saturday, parked in a residential area. On Saturday, Ortiz called, uh, Vite called 911 and said he wanted to speak with authorities. He was arrested. But, oh, so he turned himself in. He was arraigned Tuesday and ordered held without bail. Uh, this is uh, so. This is another case of domestic violence homicide. Uh, he said, "Yeah." Becker said the shooting occurred in Garcia's car without going into detail. Um, so he killed her and took the car and 
dumped her and then drove off with the car. Hence the carjacking law in Michigan covers this. Um, they established a GoFundMe. Speaking to the Midwestern earlier, Mavi Garcia, who previously identified Ortiz Vite in a Facebook post as the suspect in her sister's death, said her sister was a great person all around. Um, she would brighten up a room. Uh, she was a great daughter, sister, and friend. Um, this is her. She was really sad. Um, and, uh, it, it, by the way, uh, let's see, hold on with this one. Trump gets age of murdered woman wrong while using her death to slam Biden's immigration policy. Um, he did not. Garcia family says Trump did not speak with them about Ruby's death, but, and I'm shocked because he's, he's, he's big on f fucking following, you know, like bugging these folks and hold on. There we go. Yeah. Is this the one? Yeah. Um, and taking advantage of, you know, of these situations. Horrible, sir. There's so many of them. You could go on for days, but some of them. Yeah, you can't, though. Some of them just, uh, they resonate. You know what? You could go on for days. Wait, I have an idea. Because I'm out of, I don't have much time, if I may, chat room. Um, let's see. Um, let's see. see you know one of the things you could do is uh you know you could go on for days is the number of people that were uh working in trump's campaign or that have been like precinct officers or you know have uh, worked inside the cabinet that have been busted for child porn and sex trafficking there's a there's a lot of those fuckers that and you don't even have to be anecdotal you don't have to like skate all over the fucking country you can just go to your campaign and just go down the list of dudes who have been busted for this shit. So yeah, talk about going on for days. Uh, if you feel like if you want to lose weight by throwing up, it's a it's a great way to do it. So there's that. It's so much more for what. It's weird that he doesn't bring those people up and say that never, never in my camp. Like, a, you know, people will try to take advantage. Look, 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 look. Um, people will try to take advantage of any good thing. There are there are monsters out there who will try to anything you set up that's nice. You know, if, you, if you're giving away free shit, somebody will try to steal from other people just because they can get more free shit than other people. Like, that's going to happen. It's okay. And it's okay to call that shit out. It's all right to recognize there's a difference between the people who appreciate and, and need something or are helpful. And, there's, and there will always be a slice of shitty fuckers out there. So if something happens in your campaign and it comes up that somebody's been taking advantage of this, people go... You know, you know, we are so focused on families and children and helping them that it, it is going to attract if we're, you know, and we have to be diligent to weed out people. We're going to be accusatory because people come to us and care about these things. We've got to make sure that they're not taking advantage of the fact that we're working with these people and they find vulnerable people and go to it, like certain youth pastors and other shit like that. And if something happens in our campaign that's related to that, they're out. They're out. Mr. Spock, this has nothing to do with capitalism. Uh, <laughs> Mao uh, used to say he didn't worry about um, about venereal disease because he washed his penis in the bodies of his concubines. Th this is not this is nothing. That's a human nature thing. It has nothing to do with capitalism. Good lord. Whatever reason, they're all so horrible, and there's so many of them. Yeah, there are. But you know, but uh, we'll we'll focus on the girls that you know. If a man dies in an exchange, they say, well, "Fuck him." Now Ruby's love. The misandry here is disgusting. The ones in community are left grieving for this incredible young woman, remembering what they called her. They said she had just this most contagious laughter. And when she walked into a room, she lit up that room. And I've heard. Yeah, that's from the article we read. He did not talk to them. And they said. I heard this. that from so many people. I spoke to some of her family. Mm, no, no, apparently you didn't. Two months ago, another illegal alien. Mr. Spock, no, it isn't. In. That, like, I, I get where you're going, but no. Criminal was sentenced in Kent County by executing a 22-year-old Grand Rapids woman while she was in a car with her one-year-old baby, shooting her at least five times all over. <laughs> That's supposed to make it worse? With a rifle at point-blank range. Right, which is just not how you do a rifle, right? Well, the killer was wanted for outstanding attempted versions of various forms of strangulation <laughs> what 
wanted for various forms of strangulation. What? I mean, we've had, we look, he, this is not the first time he's done this shit before. Um, let me see if I can find it. There was a, um, there, there was a case back when he was president, I want to say, or like or when he was running in 2020, anyways, he was still president or whatever. And he, he said, where is it? Um, yeah, it's in, it's in this other one. Let me quick. Super fucking, yeah. You know, I told the U.S. Marshals to go get the man who killed a another man. Sure. Okay. We'll just, what, fan out? <laughs> Can you imagine being a police officer and, and that's, that's the order he gives? I want you guys to go out and find a man who killed another man. Uh, does he have to be roaming free or can we just go to the jail and point? Because if we go to the prison, there's a bunch of those fuckers. We can, there's one. Got you. Is this a is, is, is this a scavenger hunt? They were looking for this particular killer all over the country. Uh, he was allowed to come into our country by a very weak border policy. Really? So the border patrol just let him come in? They were just like, sorry, we would we would have stopped you, but but you know, Biden wants you in here. And just a few weeks ago, I met with the grieving family of Lakin Riley. You know Lakin. She's, uh, she was incredible. Top of her class. Everything was the top. She was. It's so fucking weird. Like, leave this woman alone. The top of everything. She was incredible. She was the top of everything. Incredible. I met the parents. Incredible people. The 22-year-old nursing student in Georgia who was barbarically murdered by an illegal alien animal. Uh, the Democrats say, please don't call them animals. They're humans. I said, no, they're not humans. They're not. No. Most of the time when they're talking about this, they're talking about uh, groups of people. You refer to people coming across the border as vermin and animals. Speaking about somebody who murders somebody else and using the analogy that person's an animal is not the problem. The, the, and defending the fact that you call large groups of people animals based on the fact that some people are fucking animals is uh, is a dodge. It's lazy. It's weak. Yeah, but they're animals. No, they're not. He might be, in the poetic sense, but the rest of them aren't. What you're trying to do is take the fact that you call him an animal because of what he did and paint that on everybody who's crossing the border, which is why you have some maggots going down to the fucking border and shooting at people. Nancy Pelosi told me that. She said, please don't use the word animal, sir, when you're talking about these people. I said, I'll use the word animal because that's what they are. I'll never forget my vow. Right. Hey, uh, Michigan Muslims who think uh, genocide Joe is your problem. Good, good, good luck. Have fun. I mean, I, I yeah, I don't know what that is. To her wonderful mother, father, and sister two weeks ago, and uh, I said, I will deliver justice for Lake. And I said that. And now today I'm adding something. It's going to be. F also, how? He's already in jail. For Lakin. And it's also justice for Ruby. We're going to deliver justice for Ruby. We're going to watch what happens with this. He was already caught. He turned himself in. What the fuck are you talking Thug. about? We're going to watch what happens. We're going to watch what happens. We don't have to. He turned himself in. And we have all the law enforcement behind. They're going to be watching what happens to this thug. He's not going to get away with it. So many people. He's already in jail. People get away with it. They say, oh, let him go. Let him go. Nobody's saying let him go. What the fuck's wrong with you? I'm uh, seriously, who the fuck? Listen to this asshole. This is a serious situation. A woman was murdered. And we have all the law enforcement behind. They're going to be watching what happens to this thug. He's not going to get away with it. So many people get away with it. They say, oh, let him go. Let him go. Nobody's saying, oh, let him go, let him go. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? I'm the only one that has to put up a bond. You know, I put up a bond. I didn't, oh, good Lord. I didn't do anything wrong. I had to put up a bond this morning for $175 million. I did nothing wrong. They can. You didn't have to put up a bond. Your company did. It's a, it's a civil case, motherfucker. Even if you couldn't do it. They would take your properties, not you. You can still walk around. Shoot somebody, kill somebody, and walk out of jail. Nope. They could be accused of it, 
But unless there's enough evidence to hold them, if they, they're an ongoing threat or they're a flight risk or something, then then bond can be issued or something like that. An hour later. How about that? Do you think that's a... Is that how Michigan works? Ask these cops. Mm -hmm. Fair policy. That's that's called radical left. But not one more innocent life should be lost to Biden migrant crime. OK, the first step to restoring safety in America is to fire crooked Joe Biden. Get him out November 5th and we're going to get him out. We're going to. I've got right down here. I've got it written. Crooked Joe Biden. Uh, it's on here. It's a piece of paper. It says words. You know, uh, I hate this. I hate you. I hate where I am. Uh. We're going to have. We're going to have more people voting, I think, than anybody can even imagine. And oh, OK, so fake votes, you're going to have people uh, double voting like in I mean, because literally, they'd, you know, I wouldn't imagine that they'd have more voters in the villages than were actually there. It's not like they're serving overseas. Um, if uh, that happens, if we swamp them, if we swamp them, you know, swamps. N yeah, swamps are bad. I think you have to. Uh, um, you have to slab it, I think, is the phrase. Hold on, let's see if it works. Mm hmm. Of course. Everything takes a minute to wake up. Why is that? We have to slab it. There we go. To, first, you want to drain the swamp, but you want to, for purposes of voting, you want to swamp them. Jesus Christ. I only can say one word. For how the fuck? What the? Here I am like an idiot. What? What? S f flood? You need a tsunami? Why not? And we're going to swamp them and uh, they won't be able to cheat because they're very good at that. Three years ago, we we're going to drain a swamp that we swamped them with as soon as we're done swamping them. We had the them. most secure border in U.S. history. And you see that up there? We ended. Yeah. So you see the big yellow uh, part? Yeah, the, the people trying and trying and trying and trying again. It's the same, you know, same number of people. There's actually fewer people crossing the border under Biden than during Trump, but for COVID. Catch and release. We built 571 miles of border wall very successfully. We're all ready to add another 200. That's far more than I said I was going to build. Yes, thank you. I've got three minutes. But it worked so well. We got Mexico to send 28,000 soldiers. Oh, that's bullshit. All right. Uh, I'm going to I'm gonna bug out chat room because I got to go. Uh, I got to drive. And I was going to be a little late because I love you guys. But I, I'll just go now because if I get to the car, I've got to put my shoes on and stuff. Um, I'll see you guys at the regular time tomorrow. And we're, um, uh, let's see. Do we have, Andrea, do we know if the we've got um, guests tomorrow? We've got, I know Phil's going to be there. But uh, do we have... Um, do we have uh, Frangela coming in this week or do we know because I'd love to have uh, them on and John and I think Steph should be a guest on my goddamn show that's what I think I mean I could get her on there right after she's done she just roll straight over and come on to my show god damn it I, I mean it's not too much to ask um, but either way uh, yes yes yeah, we'll hope so anyways I'll let you guys know and I will be there in the morning and I'll see you later and take care of yourselves and all this stuff and be careful because the kidney is out there and it's waiting for you. Get me, it's coming. It's scary. You know it's, it's always there. Waiting.